back to the puzzle office. So I wanted to make a video on the progress that we're making on the sundial box. So we're just, we're still looking at how to manufacture everything. We're doing a lot of testing and a lot of design work and some rework, doing a lot of 3D printing. I got the fourth axis set up and ready to run. I 3D printed some calls to hold down the curved parts. We make these ourselves. Um, this is veneer that we clamp up on a form and then we'll put it right on here and we carve over top with the machine as this fourth axis is spinning. So as this turns, the spindle goes over top with the carving tool and carves into the wood side that is clamped on here. And so that was a big hurdle to get over, but I'm very happy with the result. This is some practice carvings that I did and they came out looking super cool. We're going to change them up a little bit so that they're a little bit more authentic, but I'm pretty pleased with that. Now that leads me to this new kind of wood we're going to use. This is some Ipe veneer and it's uh, really dense. It's like three times more hard than oak and we're going to use that for making this side because this is made out of poplar, but we're going to make it out of Ipe instead because it's much harder. We're always missing some drill bits, so Everett reordered um, a few of the drill bits we have missing here, so they're going to show it. Excited about working with the Ipe. I've never worked with Ipe before. Um, so another new thing that we've been testing out is this vacuum setup and a vacuum bag. So in order to make these curved panels, we take a whole bunch of this veneer, and Everett's been the one uh, doing all this. We take a whole bunch of veneer and we cut it up on this sled right here and we have a whole bunch of short pieces of veneer and we stack them cross grained one on top of another and then we put that stack on one of these forms. So this is a form I made out of MDF. We put the stack on there and then we put it into this vacuum bag and the vacuum will draw all the air out of the vacuum bag and it will suck it up tight and it will actually clamp the panel into that curved shape and then we'll have our curved panel and we'll come out of there and it'll look like this. So that whole setup is working fairly well. We're still tweaking some things. We're making some sides. These Everett modeled up and 3D printed himself. So these are just going to help us align everything a little bit better and keep the mesh from getting underneath the panel as we clamp it. Uh, we just got to get it into a really good flowing system that has, um, you know, zero mistakes and works every single time because we're going to be making a lot of these sides, a lot of these boxes. So we need to make sure we get the process dialed. Okay, so this is the newest addition to the arsenal. This is a hardened lathe and it's retrofit with a CNC control. This is a Fagor control and um, this is just a two axis lathe but uh, Josh has been setting it up and he, uh, he's he been working with this thing uh, down at the other shop where he works so he, he knows the machine pretty well so he bought all the tooling and stuff and is setting this up. We're gonna have like a part off tool over here, We're gonna have a profiling tool here you know whatever kind of threading or drilling tools we need here. I think it was a good purchase. We're going to be able to make a ton of small curved uh, round parts on this lathe. We could do screw threads, we could do a whole bunch of different stuff. It really opens up um, the possibilities. Right now Josh is working up looking up uh, phase converters and capacitors and all the stuff we need to get this to operate. So the 3D printer has been working a bunch. Um, it's really easy to use. It's really user friendly. It's very plug and play. Um, the learning curve was not very significant. Just able to prototype parts and we've been making a lot of other shop jigs and things. Just printed this the other night. This is going to be a little form to hold the sundial box so that we can sit it and drill into the top. Just lower the table there. And I definitely recommend it for people making puzzle boxes or, you know, making 
fabricating parts and designing new parts. It's super quick to get a new, you know, visual, you know, a new 3D object of what you're actually sketching and how big it's going to be. So look at this cool tool that someone made. Wow, that is so cool. Yeah, just look at that. You stick that in there. Wow, is that like you, a wrench for yeah, that? Call yeah. it. Call it wrench. It, it fits is right that in 3D there. 3D printed. 3D printed. Whoa. Yeah. Oof, cool. You can even get a. Uh, uh, that looks like it costs like this. forty-two cents to print, but the the if you were to yeah. buy that off of eBay, that would cost like twenty-five ninety-seven. It's amazing. You'd yeah, save a say, ton of money. Man, somebody was really thinking there. Wow. You could even put a, a wrench on the flats there if you really mm -hmm. need to torque them down, which you never <laughs> do. But um, yeah, pretty cool. Wow, that'll save us a ton of money because we're going to be using these five C collets all the time, aren't we? Yeah, we bought a whole bunch of them. Right. Wasn't that a good idea there, Ev? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Boy. Yeah. I wonder who That's had it. that idea. Don't actually use the 5C. Let's, let's yeah. go. It's a great idea, except for the fact. Never mind. Let's go down. <laughs> except well, Josh really told me. Joke if you don't show them Josh told me we don't actually need it because the, the collets don't actually spin when you put them in the lathe. <laughs> when you thread them in the lathe. Now I could go into our uh, the vacuum jig which we use for clamping the pieces and gluing those up, which is kind of cool. It's just basically, uh, you know, a hose and a small grid pattern so that we have suction all the way out to the edges, so that uh, when we go to glue these pieces up, um, they don't they're not flopping around on us. Just small little things in that. Like we've made a lot of good improvements in the shop. But for now, I'm just going to cut the video short just to kind of give everybody an update on where we are and what we're working on. But uh, things are going good. And... <laughs> well, it's just, it's really hard to wrap your mind around it. And um, we kind of just figured out that we're sinking a whole ton of money like into this thing. And we kind of have to figure out the, some simpler solutions to things we wanted because... Um, Robert and I went a little crazy with the design, so I think we made good progress on it just figuring out some some better things to do or some more efficient ways to go about some of the mechanisms because it's a crazy box. It's like, I don't know, two or three times as complicated as the sea chest, <laughs> wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're, we're almost to the point where I, we understand the whole scope of it, so we're just about ready to build just about ready to go into production but we're planning on starting production in July so through this month of June we're just going to keep prototyping and making practice parts and, and working with the design and getting our system downs for the sides and everything but then come July we should be able to go into production so stay tuned for that that's boring very interesting very interesting anything you want to say about I'm just my and my own business. So. Everett, our, um, our, yes, resident mine. He's just mine his own business. That's the best joke he's ever told on the <laughs> channel. <laughs> Good stuff. Everybody stay tuned. Uh, let us know what kind of updates you'd like to see for this box, what you guys like watching most, and we'll be sure to put out videos like that.